Well, uh, thank you very much, Sharon, for uh, connecting us with Subu, who is in Mumbai. Um, Subu is representing the Harness Touch team. Um, but since these, uh, these videos are um, aimed to present the community, um, to introduce the finalists of the Open Education Challenge uh, to the rest of the community, I ask um, him uh, to be introducing himself um, right now and also to present us about uh, their products. Please, Subo, whenever you want. All right. So thanks, thanks very much, Sharon. Thanks very much, Monse. Um, let me just introduce myself. My name is Subu. I represent the company called Harness. Uh, my co-founder Kuljit and I started Harness about three years back in 2011. And incidentally, we are the only team from uh, India, I think the only team from Asia, uh, to have the privilege of being in the final as well as being eventually being selected for the incubation program. So it's, it's really an honor. Um, let me spend uh, about the next five to six minutes introducing our products, introducing our company. Um, and uh, if we have any questions, we can probably take those. So let me share my screen. So um, at Harness, we have created a portfolio of products uh, to disrupt the core of education delivery. So, and we have kept the teacher at the center. So we have created a set of teacher tools to change the currency of learning uh, from the 200, 250 year old lecturing system to one of collaboration powered by devices. Um, so let me just lay out what we try, what we're trying to do. Uh, so if you look at today's learning experiences, uh, they uh, either within a classroom or uh, online, they still do not exploit the full potential of devices. Uh, right now, the teacher and, and and the students' devices are largely disconnected. Uh, there are over 10 million tablets in education. Uh, started with the iPad, but Android has sort of uh, made its mark as well. But despite that, there is still no killer app for uh, an all-device classroom. So these teachers are still trying to struggle to find out why should I bring, uh, why should I ask my students to bring a tablet to the classroom. This is despite 75,000 education apps. Uh, less than 10 of them are used for live collaboration between the teacher and the student. And even these 10 don't look at learning holistically. They just solve one piece of the learning puzzle. Uh, if you look at outside the classroom, if you look at on online learning, um, the MOOCs have made a huge mark. Uh, but uh, if you look at MOOCs as well as virtual classrooms, MOOCs aren't rigorous. The, the, the dropout rates are as high as 95%. Uh, the virtual classrooms on Skype or Google Hangout, as we discovered shortly, really cannot scale, uh, especially in, in emerging economies where there, is, there are bandwidth constraints. Now, that's where we come in. We, we're calling our suite of tools called Learning 2.0, uh, the next generation in learning and teaching. It's a suite of teacher tools that we've built which changed the currency of learning from lecturing to collaboration, where the teacher is no longer a deliverer of a lecture, the teacher is a collaborative facilitator. And we've also built an interesting uh, video platform called UniOflip, which will change videos in education from uh, a typical uh, pause, play, re-seek button to, to one of interaction. Um, let me just briefly tell you about these two products, um, and, uh, and then we'll probably take questions. So the, the, the first, um, the product that I spoke about, about the, the core classroom product is called Unio Class. Uh, and uh, we, we are actually, our portfolio of products are, are, are under the name called Unio. Uh, we have products for the classroom called Unio Class. We have products for higher education called Unio. We have products for uh, corporate training called Unio Corporate. But essentially, they all revolve around the same principle, which is how do I make the classroom more collaborative? Um, so essentially, um, uh, let me just explain Unio class to you. What it does is um, it, it actually networks the teacher's device with the student's devices. So imagine a teacher walking into the classroom with a tablet, and students also use their tablet. The teacher uses uh, the tablet for education delivery, and, uh, and she uses it for personalized training. So what happens is the teacher can either uh, share a presentation on the tablet. It gets streamed live to all the students. She can annotate on the tablet. Uh, now these these annotations go in real time, uh, as opposed to the student just watch, walk, watching a projector which is a few yards away. The, the students will see what the teachers write on their tablets a few inches away from them in real time, and that creates a fantastic engagement actually because you see stuff coming alive in front of you. And uh, as opposed to a Google Hangout or, or a Skype, despite the fact that we're using that, one of the big limitations is that the participants are often passive. They really can't, cannot, cannot really participate. Whereas in, on, on Unio class, 
students can write their own annotations on top of the teacher uh, teacher annotations. Uh, this becomes very powerful because the students are able to write their own takeaways on top of what the student, what the teacher writes. And um, this continues and the teacher is able to um, at any point of time look at student activity in real time. So let's say I've, I'm, I'm a science teacher who's given a problem. Students can solve it on their tablets. I can from the place where I sit monitor what each student does. Take one student, take his answer, go down, take a sneak peek at it, make a correction. Uh, essentially, it's a one-on-one -on -one whiteboarding session with the teacher, as well as um, uh, as well as show a great answer to the other student. So I can say, here is how Sharon has solved the problem, or here is how Monse has solved the problem, and press a button and show that in real time with the students. So it sort of works as a gamification tool, where students get to know what uh, the best student has done, and they try to sort of improve. Um, this is just one form of collaboration. We've built several use cases around it. I can uh, I can launch live polls and uh, look at uh, how students have responded in real time and, and then and then tailor my teaching. I can divide the class into groups and get each group to work together on their own tablets on a shared whiteboard and present their findings to the rest of the groups. Uh, I can um, I can flip the classroom. We also have a flipped learning tool where. I can actually publish a video of myself, and and students can can can, can actually do, look at the flipped video before the classroom and and present to the rest of the class. Uh, I can make a, a student uh, a presenter. Students can present to the rest of the students. So we've built, we've actually sort of turned uh, lecturing on its head, and changed the currency of the classroom from students being very passive learners who just listen to students who actually become active learners. Uh, in terms of traction, we are. Um, so let me skip the detail. We are live in four countries as of today. We released uh, the sixth version of our product um, say three weeks back. Uh, we are mighty busy. Uh, we are live in India. Uh, we are live in um, in three Middle East countries, Bahrain, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have about 20,000 students uh, who are supposed to start using our platform over the next three months. Uh, we've also made our inroads into Europe. Uh, we will have a one university in UK piloting our product in the next couple of months. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so it's, 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 a, it's a fairly mature product. It's, it's ready for prime time. It's, it's ready for, uh, for, for the European teacher and the European student to adapt it. Um, we also have uh, smaller versions of, of Unio class on, this, on, on education app stores like Edmodo. We are a featured app inside Edmodo. With, we have another 20,000 users right there. Um, that's so. That's that's about it. I'll be happy to take questions. Okay. So, could you, Sivu, could you tell us um, what have you learned from like your initial launches in the first four countries that you're going to possibly change or implement those learnings in Europe? Yeah, um, the learnings have largely been on the um, uh, so the, the couple of them I'd like to point out. One is on on the teacher training. And the second is on the go-to-market. Um, I think uh, we've sort of realized that uh, teachers uh, in different geographies are very different. Uh, and we will need to focus on the teacher, on the teacher training. Uh, so uh, geography like Middle East, we, we actually sort of over-invest in, in training the teacher. Uh, in, in, in Europe, I think, uh, I, I imagine there'll be two kinds of uh, countries. There'll be countries like the UK where uh, there's a fair bit of technology penetration inside the classroom where teachers will sort of pick it up automatically. There will be certain other countries where we need to uh, over-invest in terms of teacher training. So, so sort of being aware of what each country demands in terms of teacher training has been one learning. Uh, the second learning is um, uh, is that in terms of go-to-market, I think uh, we will need to scale through partners. We can't do it alone. Uh, we will need a global team with uh, 200 salespeople if we are to knock at the door of every school and every university in the world. So we will need like-minded partners. And we've uh, just making one partnership in the UAE successful. So we've had a lot of learnings around that. Um, uh, and and, and we're trying to apply those learnings in, in, in Europe. So we now know what is the kind of partner who can actually take this product uh, to local markets. Mm -hmm. OK. And can you tell us a bit about your team? Sure. Because, I mean, it seems like you've already got quite a lot of clients. And you know your operation is already pretty big. So what's your team like? Yeah, so we are a team of 15. Um, Kuljeet uh, is, is, is the co-founder. With Both of us are business school classmates from the Indian School of Business in Hyderabad. Um, uh, 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 apart from the two of us, we have uh, three fairly senior in the middle management. We have a couple of engineers, uh, Prasanna and Vasant, uh, who are product managers. 
and we have somebody a lady called Supreet who head the who takes care of marketing so that's sort of a middle management layer uh, and uh, and then we have another 10 people on the development and the pro and the sales and marketing side so we are a team of about 15 and uh, we are bursting at our seams uh, we will probably need to double that fairly soon we needed to double that yesterday mm -hmm. <laughs> wow it's well it sounds like you're doing really well so congratulations and uh, and the last question is so you've explained how your platform can help students to learn content more effectively but could you tell us a bit more about what type of soft skills or technological skills they can learn in addition to curriculum from using your platform? Yeah, good question. I think um, collaboration and working in teams is an important 21st century skill. Uh, we sort of uh, spend 20 years of our life taking exams on our own, but when we, when we come to work, we have to work in teams. Uh, and that's that's one reason why graduates are not ready for real life. But I think that's an important skill that our platform will teach, which is learning learning through collaboration uh, and working in teams, uh, because this is built around principles of collaboration. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We know that uh, you are running out of of time um, now. So um, well, and thank you, Sharon, also for for those questions. Um, probably clarifying aspects that that some people that can see this video um, as synchronized um, will will for sure um, um, will enjoy. Thank you very much, Tubu, and talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.